So this is a small temple here at Trongsa Zong, the monastery area. So behind me is one of the two temples here in Bhutan out of the 108 temples that pinned down the demon that was hindering the proliferation of Buddhism in the world. I had goosebumps twice here in this place. So you can see fabric um, being woven here. Morning everyone, finally I'm with my friends. This is day five of this trip. And thank you Druk Asia for making this possible, having two separate itineraries. This time we have a big van <laughs> just for the three of us. We just arrived here at the parking of Trongsa, Trongsa Zong. And look at that, I feel so small. Built in 1644, this ancient fortress used to be the seat of the Wangchuk dynasty before they became the rulers of Bhutan in 1907. On my back is Trongsa Fortress or Trongsa Zong. And if you notice, it's very, very huge. This is the longest um, Zong here in Bhutan. And it's very important because all of the kings in Bhutan would have to be uh, Trongsa Penduk or Trong Trongsa governor before they become king. That is the door as soon as you enter and this side will be the administrative side and this side will be the monastery. So this is the monastery area here at Trongsa Zong. Look at the architecture and this is a very old fortress and look how beautiful it is. Wow, I'm just amazed just looking at the intricate designs from the walls, from the pillars, to the roofs. Everything is just so amazing. This is the monastery part of the Trong Sezong. And it's really very um, um, rich architecture. And it's huge complex. It's a huge complex. This is another courtyard in the many courtyards here at Trongsa Zong. This massive zong is the largest fortress in Bhutan, located on a spur overlooking the gorge of the Mangdi Chu River. The size, strategic location, and grand architecture of the zong renders it one of the most impressive zongs in the country. So this is a small temple here at Trongsa Zong, the monastery area. And the main image is an image of the present Buddha. And beside, on the left and the right side are images of the future Buddha. There's also a throne that is used by the chief abbot and the king. And this temple is usually used for um, morning prayers and evening prayers. The walls and the pillars are intricately designed. And I remember there's one um, image on the wall uh, where the two students of Buddha are there and these two students um, were, were able to convince Buddha to come back to Earth. And this is actually made of um, yak skin and you can even see the stitches here and it's very, very ancient and very old. We are here at the Royal Heritage Museum at Trongsa, and this used to be um, a watchtower um, guarding the Trongsa Zong. And it's actually a very nice museum. It's the first museum I have been here in Bhutan. And essentially, you start all the way uh, from the bottom. There will be a short um, video presentation about the history. And then you, you essentially work your way up. Um, and there are 11 galleries, which will actually lead you up to the um, top of the tower with an amazing view of this valley and also overlooking the Trongsa Zong. 
So if you ever come here in Trongsa, do not miss this museum. You can easily spend um, more than an hour here just um, marveling at the different exhibits like the um, sculptures made of clay and also the paintings and old clothing and old treasures and heritage um, items as well. After visiting the museum, we're just here for um, a short uh, tea break because um, it will take a while before we head to our lunch place. And you can, you can see the view. There are monks outside. And this is a very cozy uh, place. It's made of wood and it's a very small cafe. And we are gonna have traditional uh, Bhutanese biscuits here. Um, I'm sure if you've been watching my vlog, you probably have seen this one. And also some biscuits. This is our first stop in Bumtang and we are at the handicraft center where they weave um, fabric made from yak hair and also sheep's wool. So this uh, place called Bumtang is known for uh, yatra production which is a pattern that is very popular here in Bumtang. Uh, the locals in the ancient times, the women would wear these patterns as a fashion statement and in current times, even the men would be wearing all of these patterns. And when Bhutanese go outside of their country, they proudly wear these patterns as well as a symbol of their heritage. Here are some of the products that they sell here. These are bags. Uh, this used to be the only design they produced in the past, but now they also sell modern designs like this one. You can see there are also coats there. Um, I think these are for ladies. There are some scarves here. There are other bags, uh, backpack, and these are actually uh, blankets. So in ancient time, these blankets and the scarves that you've seen a while ago are only used by the executives, and that's how they control the, the quality. So layman during that time we won't be able to use the, these patterns um, from uh, these blankets and the scarves. Now we're gonna go up and we're gonna witness how some of the products are woven here in Bumtang. You can see fabric um, being woven here and the current pattern is essentially for um, uh, men. Um, it will be made into a go and the process will take uh, one week before this fabric will be sold to the tailor. After witnessing the weaving process, we were brought to another room to show us how pigments and colors are introduced into the fabric. I will be creating a separate video on that and will provide more information about the intricate patterns called Yatra. We just arrived here at our hotel in Bumpa and we're also gonna have lunch here. You can see the interior of this um, restaurant. It's really nice. Behind me is Champa Lakang, and this building was built in the 17th century. So let's go inside and explore and learn about what this temple means. Now I'm here at um, Chimelakang, and if I just turn around, this courtyard is very, very similar to the one in Kichu Lakang, the one in Paro, and this one and the one in Paro 
are the two oldest temples here in Bhutan. So the this is the main courtyard which I was saying that is very similar to Kichulakao. And that door over there is actually the entrance to the temple. So behind me is one of the two temples here in Bhutan out of the 108 temples that pinned down the demon that was hindering the proliferation of Buddhism in the world. And the other one is in Paro, which you will see in my other vlog. So this temple is a very small temple. It's one of those two temples that has the, um, the future Buddha as the main um, image at the center. And then on each of his side will be the present Buddha, the present Buddha and the past um, Buddha. This temple um, or came from the, uh, the name of the Buddha called uh, Cho Champa. That's why this one is called uh, Champa Lakang. We just came inside of this temple and the main image in this temple is the image of Guru Rinpoche and there are also other forms of Guru Rinpoche around the main statue. And this temple was, has a very interesting story. So Guru Rinpoche has prophesied that this temple will be built by a person named Ugyen, which happened to be the first king of Bhutan. And apart from that, um, when Ugyen uh, had a dream, and in the dream, he couldn't identify the character of the dream, whether the character is a human, a god, or a demon. And in that dream, he was handed over a box. And when he woke up and opened that box, there's a drop of gold. And so he wanted to paint the face of the um, Buddha statue here with gold, but there's only one drop. So he went all the way to Tibet to look for that same gold. And then the people in Tibet told him that there's no gold similar to that drop of gold that he brought all over the world. And so he came back to Bhutan and had another dream. And in that dream, it was clear that the character is Guru Rinpoche. And he said to him that you can use that drop of gold, single drop of gold, to paint the whole face of the Buddha statue. And the Buddha statue's face is probably at least two meters in height. And you know, one drop of gold was able to paint the whole so, face. That one behind me is the main temple here. It's called um, Kurji. Kur means body and Ji means body imprint. And inside that temple, we were lucky because we were, we were able to see the actual cave where Guru Rinpoche uh, left his body imprint. Alright, so this is the narrow rock passageway and if you are able to fit here, you have, um, I think, a reasonable amount of sins. Um, you see, it's very narrow. I, am, I will be trying to fit here. I, I actually don't know if I will ever fit this passageway. <laughs> no, there's no way. There's no way. I think I'll just accept that I have far too many sins for now. <laughs> Cannot. So I'm going to attempt again this narrow passageway and let's see. I made it. I feel good about myself. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's quite tight in there, uh, but it's a nice experience and it's a good feeling uh, because based on the story, if you fit in that passageway, you have uh, less sins compared to to the rest. This complex is really impressive. So I'll do a 360, so you will see this whole complex.
I had goosebumps twice here in this place. The first one was at the main temple where I saw the cave where Guru Rinpoche had his imprint. And then the second one was when I managed to crawl um, under the narrow passageway.